Meet brothers Dan and Luke Mancuso. Dan's a designer and Luke's studying to be a barber. They're both in their 20s and they're both in love with the girl next door. Thanks, Nina. Most days, the very shy Nina cooks a meal and serves it up over the fence. Friday's a soup day, so yep. it's either bean or lentil soup. But uh, my favourite is the spanakopita and also the chicken and rice. And I think Luke's the same. You've got to sit down when you eat it because your knees will buckle, I'll tell you that much. It's <laughs> some good stuff. A lot of love and care, that's for sure. In return, the boys help out where they can. You know, we'll cut her grass, we'll take the bins out off. She needs to go to the shops, we'll take it to the shops. And just little things, just looking out for one another. Last year, they started sharing their yaya with the world. And at last count, that hit 62,000 followers on Insta. I hope you like it. We always love this. I notice we hear, yeah, yeah, we don't see her face. Is that your choice, her choice? Who's done it, Luke? She said, make sure you don't show my face and that. So we've respected her wishes and that. And I think that's the beauty of it too. It's a mystery. But there's a lot more about Nina that I haven't told you. She's married, well into her 70s, and also goes by the name of Yaya. That's Greek for Nonna, or Grandma, or Nana. Anyway, you get it. Oh, Nina, you're the best. Am I saying it wrong? Is it Yaya? We know we're pronouncing it wrong, but I think it's pronounced Yaya or Yayi. Or I can't, yeah. can't actually say it, but yeah. So to all the Greeks out there losing their mind, screaming at the TV, <laughs> get over it. <laughs> Yaya treats Dan and Luke like family because she knows what these two boys have had to go through. 2013 in uh, July 15th, we lost our mother which was obviously a big, massive shock to us and it just literally just flipped our whole world around in, that, in one night. Shaking his head in defiance, Fernando Paulino still denies he bashed and stabbed his estranged wife, Teresa Mancuso, 16 times in the garage of her reservoir home in 2013. What's the main thing you think of when you remember your mum? Selfless, I'd say. Yeah, Definitely. just selfless. She, just, <laughs> she literally just would do anything for her friends and her family. It was just number one. You know, I often think of little memories like she'd wake me up in the morning and I'd walk into the kitchen, you know, it'd be cold winter morning and she's already got your socks, you know, on in front of the heater. So you no can pop, pop your socks yeah. on so they're nice and warm. Just little things, things that, like that mothers do and she just she just yeah, she just do anything for you. In her final moments, Teresa Mancuso screamed loud enough to be heard by neighbours and ultimately helped bring her killer to justice. Yaya was the first person to raise the alarm that something was, was potentially yeah, wrong. Yeah, so she heard some screaming that night and then obviously from there it kind of just unfolded. What's going through is your stomach and your mind when you rock up and you see police cars? Well, it was all like a dream kind of thing, just like you weren't physically there. Like you just, you, your mind's there but you, you're just daydreaming because obviously that day we kind of lost two parents in a sense. So for me personally, I just think that for what his actions were, it's just a coward kind of thing. So I kind of just prefer to uh, forget about him in a sense because for me, that's probably the worst thing you could possibly do to not just a girl, but to a family. So, yeah. yeah. He robbed his children of their mother and the world of a beautiful, loving woman. Fernando Paulino will rot in jail until he's just shy of 80 years old. It's a new day and the sun's shining today for mum. The house where Teresa was murdered lay empty for years. But to honour their mum, the boys decided to move in. We feel comfortable here, um, minus obviously that what happened with mum, but we, we understood that, you know, we can create new memories here. Mum always wanted us to live with her once our parents separated, so we could at least grant her that wish of, you know, staying in the home and, you know, we can be that little bit closer to mum. So. It should be, like, wrapped that we've done all this, like, because yeah. we renovated it. I recently. think she wanted to renovate the house when my nonna was living here and, you know, get rid of, you know, the old Spice the, Temple yeah, carpet. Yeah, the Spice and Temple carpet. The glow in the dark rosary beads in the corridor and stuff like that. And now they can even enter the main living room. Unheard of. Couldn't go in there. If we went in there, you know, we'd, my nonna my nonna would yell at us, you can't go in there, it's the room that no one goes in. Did the good room used to have... Uh, uh, plastic on the couch. Yeah, plastic on the oh, couches, yeah. plastic on the table, so there's plastic up, that's for sure. Yeah. Like any wog house, really. <laughs> I don't get it either. Uh, it's yeah. a mystery. You think you'd use a good couch, but for years, now the couch, she should actually get upset, but now the good couch is in the man cave, so <laughs> if she found out that, we might get in trouble, so. How tough was it to go back into the garage? Well, look, well, when we moved in, we actually didn't touch the garage for another, what, 
a year or six at months. Least, yeah, probably, probably a year. Probably I'd say. A year. We looked at the garage and we're like we can we can change this and make it make it a beautiful thing. Yeah, it's good. We yeah. put a bit of work into it. Just you know, little toys and stuff like that we grew up with. And so it's like a kind of childhood in that this space because we the way we saw it is well, her spirit's still here. She'll be kind of with us too in that sense. Yeah. So we're trying to like yeah see it as a positive as opposed to a negative. Oh, this is the man cave. This yeah, this is, is the, the one. Man cave, right here. Damn! <laughs> this is sick! <laughs> How long did this take to bang together? Uh, it's slowly, we've added to it over the years. I love so much what this has become. Obviously, it's from a side of such pain, and you've just totally made it into a place that you can just see is full of joy. By sharing their story, they're hoping we can all help turn the tide on domestic violence. We just assumed that it was normal growing up because we were so young. But as we went on, we grew up, we realised it wasn't normal. I think just being res responsible for your actions as a man, you know, understanding that, you know, a lot of hatred and rage and stuff like that comes from, you know, these attacks and, and violence. Own up to that and acknowledge that you, you're not being the, the provider or the, you know, the man you should be and seek help from that. Your mum would be so proud of you both. <sighs> Thank you. Hope so. <laughs> She'd just be proud of who happy and doing the things we wanted to do in life. There's still dark days, but as long as you can acknowledge that, you know, you're having a bad day or a crap day, and you know it's not a permanent feeling, you can move forward from that. And even in those dark days, they know back home, there's a ray of Greek sunshine and probably a hectic moussaka just over the fence. Hi, Yaya. My name's Tommy. Yeah, my name's Yaya. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, do you have anything for us today? Yeah, pancakes. Pancakes? Yes. Thank you, Yaya. Yeah, Thanks, yeah. Yaya. Yeah, yeah, do you consider these boys your grandkids? They are. They are my grandkids. Yeah. Why do you love them? They're so nice to me. That's why. Yeah, yeah, can I try one of these now? Sure. Let's all have a crack. Oh, they're delicious. Thank you, Yaya. Yeah. Why do you love Yaya so much? It's just she's kind of taken us under her wing to be like her own kids now. And it's like we've got a second nonna or Yaya in terms. So for us, just having that extra support and it's right next door. I don't want to brag boys, but um, I also have a pretty great relationship with my neighbours. Uh, never a plate over the fence, but they once did uh, a shovel full of dog shit and threw it over into my backyard. <laughs> we've all got stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's all right. It's kind Everyone of... has their own ways. Very similar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.